Hello there, YouTube. Today, I would like to explain to you why you should play Undernight in Birth, X Lake Clear. Last night, at the dawn, a young man shows up. Hellfire burns out of the surroundings. The ice coffin quietly lies. So the time comes here. Ring the bell of the dawn. The dark night will soon be over. Whew. It's fun. Undernight in Birth, also known as Uni or when talking about this specific game version, Uni Clear, is a fighting game developed by French Bread, the same company behind Melty Blood Actions Again, the more recent Melty Blood Type Illumina, and the lesser known Duganki Bunko Fighting Climax. Most may know it because of its appearance in EVO 2019, but others may have also been made aware of this game through crossover titles like Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle, or even due to certain influencers on the internet playing through its combo, combo trials. trials. But with such a small player base, it is made very clear to me that all of this is not enough to convince people to play this great, considerable, substantial, pronounced, sizable, and particularly significant game. So right now, I plan to do just that. First and foremost, I would like to touch on arguably the most compelling part of any fighting game. And you probably know exactly what I'm talking about. The characters. With a diverse roster of 21 different and highly unique characters, one thing that Undernight stands out in is its variety. It's got Shodos, it's got Grapplers, it's got Gorillas, it's got Merkava, and it's got this... Hold on. Fustalarian? But don't let these simple archetypes fool you into thinking that they are simple or yet another cardboard cutout of Ryu from Streets. Hey there, everybody. While each character can be described by the archetypes like most fighting game characters can, unless you're Arakune from Blaze Blue, I seriously don't know what's up with that guy. This doesn't properly give each character justice as Undernight expands much farther than that simple baseline description. Take Merkava for example, the fighting game character of all time. And if you disagree with me, you are nitpicking and biased, bye bye. This silly guy is fairly slow, but utilizes movement to a great extent, capable of quickly changing his direction which allows him to stay unpredictable in both neutral and pressure, making it so that the opponent is always in range of his rather large attacks and full screen fireballs, so that they cannot take action safely. Sounds like a zoner, right? Not necessarily. While Mercado can excel at the far range, once he's able to properly confirm a hit into his combos, he will usually end in setting up one of his core pressure tools, the Worms, or the in-game name, I Persistently Cling. Now that I think about it, his move names are pretty weird. Glad we don't refer to them that way. After setting up these Worms, Merkava basically becomes a rushdown character, giving him free reign to do whatever mix-up the player may be cooking as the Worms lock the opponent down. This can lead to powerful 50-50 high-low mix-ups with his unique trait that is Flight where, after double tapping jump, lets Merkava hover in the air and control the airspace. God, this character is so cool! Sorry, had to get that out of my system. Wait, I just said flight is a unique trait, didn't I? Does this mean that every character has unique traits specific to them? Well, yes, yes they do. While seeing our big body grappler we all come to know and love, has attacks that can nullify projectiles. Carmine has certain moves that cost health but drop blood puddles, with which he can extend combos, apply pressure, and more. Not to mention he can heal this health if he successfully lands a throw. This... Scroil? Can't be counter hit. An Elnum can air throw our opponents, influence their aerial momentum by holding forward or back, can backdash in the air, and has a bullet gaze that depletes with every gun move used, and has to be reloaded manually where if a button is properly timed within the white area of this gauge, her new bullets will be strengthened with extra properties. Now you may be thinking, this all sounds complicated, right? Well, no, not really. This isn't the case as the characters in this game more often than not tend to have a low entry of skill, with a few exceptions. But then again, these very characters really do have simple combos to start with, ones that are just enough to pick up and have fun. But have incredibly high skill ceilings, allowing for any level of play, and freely express themselves with the characters they use. This is only further complemented by the passing link mechanic, Undernight's own form of a Gatling system. Take Blaze Blue for example. 
There are three main attack buttons, not including the drive button, and these are known as A, B, and C. With A being the weakest, while C is the strongest. These normals can be cancelled into each other on hit or on block in an order of ascending strength, meaning A can be cancelled into B, which then can be cancelled into C, but not the other way around. However, Under Knight circumvents this and lets any normal move chain into each other so it, working on the same three attack buttons, can form strings where C can be linked into B that then is able to link into A, thus enabling an incredible number of unique strings and possibilities. This, along with numerous other gameplay mechanics, open up an abundant amount of freedom with how players can choose to interact with the game, coalescing into a greater whole with that very freedom in mind. This is a huge part of what I love about playing Undernight in Birth. Whew, that was pretty long, but wait, we haven't even gotten to the- No. While I would argue that a solid roster of characters is the most crucial element of any fighting game, if not built on a strong set of system mechanics, the game and those characters will quite honestly be put to waste, resulting in a frustrating experience. However, Under Knight is not that. Instead, the system mechanics are what the game excels at, effectively striking the balance between both offense and defense while crafting one of the most unique fighting game mechanics ever. But before I discuss that, I first have to touch on the super meter, or what the game would like to call the existence system, or EXS for short. This super meter is about what you would expect from any other fighting game, giving each player an extra resource that fills up as damage is dealt or received and can be used to perform certain actions. These actions include EX version of special moves, infinite worths, these being the supers of this game, guard cancels to halt the opposing player's block strings, and veil off which is similar to a burst but can only be done from neutral state or while blocking, causing one's meter to gradually deplete but lets them use more meter than what is normally possible. Think Max Mode from King of Fighters. Now with that out of the way, I want to elaborate on the real meat and potatoes of this game. What I'm referring to here is the grid system. No, not that. This gauge at the bottom middle of the screen. This very gauge dictates and defines how any match plays out in under lane with both players fighting for control over it throughout the duration of each round. But you may be wondering, how can players fight for control over it? Well, well, well. As part of the grid system, each player owns, so to speak, six of these squares that can be filled over the course of a round by doing a multitude of actions, including the likes of being aggressive, utilizing concentration, which involves charging from a neutral state, and using shield as a defensive option. However, these squares can be depleted if actions such as backdashing, taking damage, or hitting your opponent's shield are taken. The goal here is to make sure you have more grid than your opponent before this circle hiding behind the gauge finishes its cycle. Whoever has the most grid at this point wins what is called the Vorpal Cycle, essentially being an advanced game of tug of war but condensed into a fun little anime fighter. Whichever player won that cycle is granted an enhanced state for the entirety of the next cycle giving a damage increase and the ability to chain shift. Chain shifting is much like a Roman cancel for those familiar with Guilty Gear, letting the player cancel the end lag of moves to extend combos or stay safe, in addition to acting as a kind of pause button to react to whatever action the opponent may have taken. This is a lot, and it can seem overwhelming, but in short, all these different pieces come together perfectly to create what I believe is the most distinct and fun system ever with what I explained to you now being a basic summary that scratches the surface of the amount of depth this game holds. Let's see, I'm forgetting something, what was it? Undernight does have the usual single player game modes with survival, score attack, time attack, combo trials, and a brilliantly robust tutorial that teaches every aspect of the game in extensive detail, but I still haven't touched on something. It's nagging at me, almost as if it's in the background of this video. The background of this video. The music. This soundtrack may just be one of the greatest fighting game soundtracks of all time, complete with individual character themes, versus tracks, menu music, and more, with the catch being that it's all good. But that's enough for me. I'll let the music speak for itself.
there's something I actually have to omit when it comes to Undernight. Something that I have chosen to omit until now. That being, even amidst this growing emphasis placed on netplay and the importance of having good rollback netcode for every new and even already released fighting game, Undernight still remains on delay based netcode, with no official or community patch anytime soon. This hinders new interest in the game while making it that much harder to play the game with other people. But despite that, the community for this game remains stronger than ever, persisting past the quote unquote dead game moniker that most games like this may face, even pushing to a number of 60 entrants at Texas Showdown 2022, and an even larger pool of 190 entrants at Combo Breaker 2022, making the 11th out of 24 most entered game at the event, only losing 10th place by one player at the hands of Grand Blue Fantasy Versus, another well-respected title still on delayed base netcode. So for this final segment, I would like to dedicate it to the community of Undernight. Now, even though it has such a vastly smaller scene compared to other similar anime fighters, such as Guilty Gear and Blaze Blue, the community is able to pull through in its shows. I asked people online before making this video what they liked about Undernight, mainly through Discord, this being an open-ended question about what they liked about the game and the number of responses mentioning the community and how they enjoyed being in it was unexpected to say the least. Having such a strong willingness to help others out to get into a game they love, whether through wiki pages like Mizumi Wiki or just responding to netplay requests is awesome to say the least. There's even an annual tournament fully committed to French bread games with Undernight as part of it. This is known as Climax of the Night. Undernight Inbirth is my favorite fighting game of all time. This may be long winded as I say this for every part of the game, but that's because I really mean it. It's the second one I properly experienced myself back in early 2018, helping in kickstarting my interest in the FTC as a whole. I hope this video has encouraged you into looking into the game, or if you already own it, continue to engage with it and its amazing community. That is all I have to say, long live the night.